and thank you all for coming this afternoon. Uh, my role on the panel this afternoon is to talk about what I think are the proposed principles of facilitating research uptake into common practice. And in putting together this talk, I uh, picked what I thought were the top criteria that would embed and spread a uh, complex intervention in practice. And I picked the top seven that I'm going to walk you through this afternoon. Uh, and I'll give a, a bit more background on each one of these. The first is to have a clear clinical goal and a provincial approach. The second is to put quality of patient care first, but define it. The third is partnerships, and by that I mean true relationship building that takes a long time. The fourth is a plan to use research evidence to improve and embed that thinking in the system. The fifth is developing and supporting clinical champions. And I actually think of all of them, I think that's the key to actually embedding and spreading. Number six is to have some structure. And number seven is to be patient because change takes time. And what I'm describing to you today has taken the better part of 10 years to get to where we are. And it's still a work in progress. To convince you that uh, this is embedding and spreading in Alberta, I'll say that as of 2012, there's now a provincial bone and joint strategic clinical network in place supported by Alberta Health Services with buy-in of all of the MSK providers in our province. The lengths of stay for primary arthroplasties have been decreasing steadily in the province. Uh, there are teams in 12 centers that provide arthroplasty care in our province that have saved over 13,000 bed days annually for the past two years, which is freeing up about $12 million in savings annually. There's now new bed capacity for an extra 3,000 plus cases per year, and more surgeries are being done and waiting times are going down as a result of this whole project that started in three places and has spread to all 12. So one of the key principles is to have a clear goal in mind, which has to be uh, better for everyone, I would say. We put the patients at the center, but it actually has to be better for the providers, the administrators, and the payers as well. And uh, that requires care careful consideration and careful measurement, as I'll touch on. Um, I'm on a bit of a mission to get people to use similar terminology and in Alberta we've been pushing the idea of defining quality using the Health Quality Council of Alberta uh, six dimension of quality matrix that's shown here with appropriateness, safety, effectiveness, accessibility, acceptability and effectiveness all being defined and measured and I really like this cartoon because it shows the connections between them and the uh, perversity of focusing on one to the detriment of the other five, which we tend to do uh, frequently by focusing on access as the only problem in our system. And uh, interestingly, I think access is the only one that really costs more and isn't where you can achieve the biggest savings. Uh, developing partnerships takes a long time. And uh, we started talking about this in about 2000. Uh, we ultimately ran a comparative effectiveness trial in 2004 to 2006 after socializing the idea with a number of different partner organizations, the universities, the health regions, the physician leadership groups uh, with the champions uh, in each of those entities for what we were going to try to do. Um, now, this is the data part of uh, building evidence into decision making. So over a number of years, we had evidence of inefficiency that uh, people didn't want to talk about too much at the beginning. Um, and this is just focusing on lengths of stay in hospital, which in, in those days was uh, averaging seven days for uncomplicated primary hip and knee replacements. We also had evidence that only about a third of patients were getting mobilized the day of surgery. And this is a surrogate for pain control, nausea control, uh, physiotherapy, prehabilitation, and a number of other things. So focusing people on a small number of things that are not uh, being performed well was kind of critical. We designed a new care pathway, and this cartoon just shows a, a standardized approach 
that, uh, again, was a guideline. It uh, wasn't meant to be rigid. It's customizable to pick up on what Paula was talking about. It did have some key principles, teams, case management, evidence-informed decision-making, some tools embedded in the system for measurement and decision-making. Um, Non-surgical and sur surgical patients were included, and we did uh, look at a different way of funding teams, which is an ongoing discussion we're having in our province. Uh, I've mentioned that it's key to uh, measure something for everyone. We tend to focus on measuring something for one group or the other, for patients or payers or providers. We tried to measure something for everyone, cost, access, and quality, with uh, targeting different uh, metrics and indicators for these different audiences. So my purpose today is not to walk you through all the results of the comparative effectiveness trial that involved 3,500 patients being randomized in two arms of a study over two years, being studied at three months and 12 months post-surgery. We focused on the surgical patients because they were the higher cost ones in this analysis. And this table just shows that we improved five of the six dimensions of quality with improvement in five of the six dimensions that lasted for out to 12 months. Um, from the payer's perspective, most importantly, this didn't cost more. It didn't exactly cost less. It cost about the same, but we shifted costs to focusing on the front end of the care pathway, which turned out to be critical to better prepare patients for their stay in hospital, which was one of the keys to getting them up and moving faster. Um, I'm not going to go through this in any detail. Now I am going to focus on developing and supporting clinical champions, which as I mentioned at the outset, I think is a key to embedding and spreading. Um, interventions that come top down will not be embraced, embedded, supported, and spread um, if it's perceived to be forced on people. So it has to be owned by the people, customized by the people, so we created uh, improvement teams in each of the centers that were providing care. Uh, these are pictures of two of them and a couple of uh, a major center and a smaller hospital. Uh, similar uh, idea, multidisciplinary approach, uh, managing to this care pathway that had these standards uh, embedded. Now I think this has been one of the keys that uh, is measuring performance over time. This is a balanced scorecard. The vertical columns are the six dimensions of quality. The horizontal columns are a scale from one to 10. The teams were all arbitrarily assigned a score of three at whatever they were performing at the time we started this trial. And each team defined what a scale would look like for each dimension of quality from one to 10. And uh, they could pick whatever they wanted in the six dimensions, except for lengths of stay, which was prescribed to them, that they had to try hit the uh, benchmark of four-day lengths of stay for uncomplicated primary hips and knees. So this was uh, implemented now about three years ago. And uh, within six months of starting, this is one of the hospital scorecards uh, with the blue bar showing their improvements from where they started at three, and you can see some of them are seven, eight out of 10, nine out of 10. So the teams recalibrated and actually changed their, their perceptions of the scores from one to 10. They've been doing this every six months now for the last uh, two and a half years. And they continue to improve all six dimensions of quality and report back to each other on their excitement about their improvement because this is the first time they're getting feedback of their performance. Now, another principle is that some structure is required to all of this. Uh, the bottom box shows the local teams that I've mentioned that actually own the changes out in the communities that are providing the care. They report into working groups that are provincial, that have provincial representation and oversight of the different partners that I mentioned at the beginning that feed into an executive core group of people that report up to the executive of uh, Alberta Health Services with sponsorship of the whole exercise. This structure has uh, proven invaluable to uh, accountability, authority, 
uh, measurement and understanding of the whole system. The boxes off to the right are the measurement part of the equation, which is the, this institute that I'm working in, which is measuring ongoing performance and feeding back report cards to each one of the 12 centers uh, and to individual physicians that are participating in this. We now have over 90% of the orthopedic surgeons in the province have signed confidentiality agreements with us to have us analyze their data and give them their reports, ideally in six dimensions of quality. Uh, right now we're only reporting back on three of the six dimensions to them, but uh, improving those uh, reports over time. So uh, I'm going to finish a minute or two early here. Um, I'm just going to go back to the seven principles, and I would say, uh, having listened to my co-panelists here this afternoon, I would probably add a couple more to this list about uh, customization and getting uh, the, the people to actually own it, um, and ongoing performance measurement and feedback, I think, is critical for people to really own it and get excited about it. Um, everything, well, what I've said about the care pathway is in the paper that's uh, shown at the bottom and uh, the clinical effectiveness part of what I've talked about is uh, in a journal manuscript in sort of final revisions right now. Thank you very much. <laughs>